Precious Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you today because you are God and you alone are God. Manifest your presence, Lord, and hide me behind your cross. Let people hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So today I'm standing here on behalf of HPS, Heaven's Postal Service. <laughs> or I, I, I should have used uh, PPS, Paradise Postal Service. <laughs> I'm delivering a message for you today. Please open it and receive it. And it's a good news. Or if, I, if, I, if, I, if, if you allow me to use a synonym of the, those, those words, good news, it's gospel. So the message today is gospel. Today is part two of our series, Generational Scene. The first, the, the, the part, part one, the first part was the apple and the tree. The second part today, it's a little bit small, so I'm going to go... Oh. All right. Can you guys press next? Okay, if, not, if it's not the mic, it's something else. All right, there we go. The branch and the vine. Today it's the branch and the vine. So just a little recap before we continue our series today. Last week we've seen the beautiful story of Abraham and Isaac. Abraham the father and Isaac the son. They both had this problem, the lying problem. We established here that we inherit the tendencies and the weaknesses of, of our father and of our forefathers. And it was shown through the example of Abraham lying that Sarah was his sister instead of saying the truth that Sarah was I, I, his wife. The same situation happened with Isaac. As Isaac lied as well about uh, Rebecca being his sister, instead of saying the truth, Rebecca as his wife. Now, most of all, we've seen that despite these things, despite the sins, despite the continuation and the perpetuation of the sin, the same sin from father to son, from generation to generation, we've seen that despite that, God blessed them. Just after the story of Abraham, just after the story of Isaac, God blessed them and made them even richer than before. Because the grace of God is sufficient. That's what we saw last time. And we were wondering what, why, why God didn't punish them immediately. Thank you, sir. Why God didn't punish them. Well, you know, the story continues. It didn't end with Isaac being blessed. The story continues, and a matter of fact, uh, Isaac had kids, and now he has Esau and Jacob, twins. Esau was the firstborn, and Jacob was uh, the younger. But God promised that Jacob would be actually the one who will receive the firstborn's blessings. But at, at his old age, Isaac was... On his bed, Jacob came and lied to him and told him that he was Esau. And, and the thing is, Isaac knew that it wasn't Esau. Isaac knew that it was Jacob. So here it is. The lie from Abraham, the lie from Isaac, now it's with Jacob. And just imagine how painful it is for a parent to see that his son is committing the same mistake that he did. I know parents here would understand this feeling. 
There is one of the worst feelings that you've ever, you will ever feel is when you see your child doing the same mistake that you did, or even worse. You see this child and then he, he, acted, he acts out or she acts out and then you remember that she did the same thing. And it's painful. That's the punishment of Isaac. Abraham lied to a king. Isaac lied to a king. But Jacob lied to Isaac, his dad. No, he didn't stop with Jacob. Because, you know, we established last week that Satan studies this weakness. And he knows this weakness from generation to generation. And then he takes advantage of this weakness. So he didn't stop with Jacob. Jacob had kids. And one day, uh, 11 of his kids came back from somewhere. And they said to Jacob, listen, Joseph, one of your favorite died and Jacob was lied to matter of fact that's not the only time he was lied to when he worked for seven years thinking that he would get uh, Rachel the beautiful one he was lied to and now we think so oh, oh, okay this is something that's going on in my life yes because I did it too and Satan is working from generation to generation he knows, he knew the weakness of Abraham, he knew the weakness of Isaac, he knew the weakness of Jacob, he knew the weakness of his sons. So what shall we do? What shall we do? You, you know, the, 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 the curious thing about this situation is that these guys lied, Abraham lied to save his life. Like he said, hey, hey, Sarah, Sarah, can you please tell them you're my sister, not my wife? Because I'm afraid that they will kill me. You know, most of the time, that's why you guys know sin. Uh, the letter I is in the middle of that word, and you, you, you probably know that already. But selfishness, selfishness takes over, and Satan takes advantage of this weakness. And they lied selfishly. You know, parents here once again will remember the first time their kids lie to them. They lie because they don't want to do something or they don't want to get something. But it's just all about them. The person who lies most of the time, or if not all of the time, is selfish. Now we have to have a solution and last week I promised that we, we will go through some steps on how to break this vicious cycle, to break the chains once and for all. Can it stop in my generation? Can it stop in your generation? If Satan is working from generation to generation, can it stop right now? So I'm going to go through through the triple A's solution this, this, this morning. And I just call it triple A's because all of them starts with A. It has nothing to do with the triple A that we know. But the first A is awareness or be aware. There we go. I'm going back. There we go. Be aware. You have to know about the problem. You have to be aware of the problem. One would never start to search for a solution to a problem until one becomes aware that there is a problem. You will not f start to search for something which is lost until you are aware that that thing is actually lost. So you have to know what's the problem. What is the problem? Talk to your daddy. Talk to your mama. Talk to your grandma. Talk to your grandpa if they're still there. Ask them what is the problem. Is there something that you need to know? Were you addicted? What is, is it medical? Is it, is it something else? Is it temperament? Is it personality? I need to know, daddy. I need to know. Because you have to know that there is a problem so that you can start to find a solution. Ignorance upon this subject. The subject 
being here is Satan working from generation to generation, the same weakness. Where so much is involved is criminal. It's criminal when you don't know that you have a problem. Be aware. You have to be aware and to understand because you have to remember that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. So you have to be aware. What is it? Make some research right now. Go to the library. <laughs> Find out your genealogy and what happened because you need to know, you need to be aware. And if your folks are not there anymore, you got to pray. This is the right time to, to, to use that verse, ask and you shall receive, knock and, you, and the door shall be op opened. This is the right time. Re, to, to remember, recall, oh, I, I, actually, I remember what daddy did. Oh, actually, he has the, it seems like he had this problem. Probably I'm facing the same uh, issue here. God, please help me to remember. And Jesus promised in, in, in the book of John, the Gospel of John, that he will send a helper who will help you to remember the things in the past so that you can actually confess them and deal with them. So first of all, be aware of your problem. And second, accept. Accept. What do you need to accept? So here is the beauty of the, of, of the Bible, the Christianity, the gospel. You know, if we inherit our parents' tendencies, the simple solution is just to change parents. <laughs> <laughs> That's the simple solution, right? And yes, God actually comes in the, in the story here, in the picture here, and said, God, in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, and this is the New Living Translation, God decided in advance to what? Adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So here is the case. It's an adoption case. Okay, so, so he, he, here we are. We have parents, earthly parents, who have been uh, under Satan's pressure and, and his snares. So now Satan is actually controlling that family. But God comes in the picture, he comes in the picture and says, Hey, I'm willing to adopt you. I'm willing to adopt you. And actually, I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to pay for it. So what's the adoption fee here? What's the adoption fee? Bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. That's the fee. That's the fee right there. So God said, okay, they're gone but I'm gonna pay for them. I'm gonna pay so that they can be my child. Adopt them. How much? Just your son. All the blood in your son. And God said, okay. And Jesus said, yes, I'm willing. I know it's gonna to be tough. And all the sins of the world will be on, upon me, but I'm willing. I'm willing, said Jesus. So God paid. God paid the fees for our adoption. And Jesus came here. He walked the perfect life. He, he was living the perfect life. And he died at the cross to pay our adoption fee. So what is it? What is it? Have you done your research yet? What is it? Whatever it is, though, whatever it is, though, it has been paid. Whatever it is that has been paid at the cross, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. And if you are old school enough, you know that hymn. 
Jesus paid it all. But that's the thing. He paid. God paid the fees. God paid the fees. But this adoption is very special. Why? Because actually the child has to decide if the child wants to be adopted or not. So the child has to decide. Everything is already there. God is, uh, uh, let's say God is on the right side, Satan is on the left side. There is no spiritual meaning, uh, meaning about right and left. I'm just taking that as an example. God is on the right side, Satan is on the left side. And Satan is saying, no, 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 they're still mine. I'm still controlling their father. I'm still controlling their mother. I'm still controlling this family from generation to generation. And God said, no, 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 I paid. I paid. I paid. Look at Jesus. Look at the cross. Fix your eyes on Jesus. I paid. I paid, but we were in the middle of this thing, of this great controversy, and we say, we have to decide. When? Every time. All the time. Now. Right now. When is the time? Now is the time. You are, you are in the midst of these great controversies. Controversy, and, and then you have to decide. And God is waiting with his arms open wide. Accept. First of all, you have to be aware of your problem. Then when you're aware of your problems, all your baggages, you bring them to the cross. Because there he paid it all. You bring them to the cross and you accept the adoption. You sign the paper yourself with his blood for he died for our sins he died for our sins <clears throat> but you know when we become his son and daughters sons and daughters we become heirs now we have this heritage through God. Now our parents, or our parenthood has changed and it's, it's God. We are now in God's family when we accept this adoption. And he says, this is what I'm going to promise you. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would inherit the world was not fulfilled through the law, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. You're going to receive something from God, but you're not going to receive it through the law, but actually you receive it through righteousness by faith. That's why you have to accept. That's why you have to decide if you accept or not this adoption. And the faith that you bring in that acceptance will start everything. Actually, that is the point when God is starting what he has already started. For those who start is with us every Wednesday, he has started something. And God, you can see now when you decide, you can see now that something has started even before you come. And you have the opportunity to become his son. So by faith, you come to God. God, I can't. You know, I have a hard time when I deal with adultery. And God, I come to you with that. I come to you just as I am. But when you, come to, when, it, when you come to God just as you are, you don't stay just as you are because the power, the power, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that has paid the fees for your adoption will clean you, will cleanse you, and will make you clear. As crystal. So you come to God. God, I, I have a problem with this particular sin. I know that because I'm struggling. I'm struggling with this one. I know that because I've made some research. My daddy used to do this. My mommy also used to do it. I have a real struggle with this one, God. And God said, no, it's okay. Come on here. Do you believe? Do you have faith in Jesus Christ? And then when you say yes... I decide to accept this adoption by faith. I decide to accept this God. And God opens his arms and said, yes, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. Come home. 
come home. The third one is abide. Abide. When you accept, the next step is to abide. To abide in Christ. No, John chapter fifteen, verse verse five, that that was read by um, Ashley earlier, is very interesting. I'm the vine says the Bible, New King James Version, you are the branches. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Without me you can do nothing. So the next step, uh, first of all, you have to be aware there's a problem. Okay, let's search for solution. Solution, yes, accept. Here is the solution. Accept. The adoption. Now you have the next step. Next step, abide. Stay in that solution. Stay in that family. Don't find another parent. Stay in that family. Abide. Abide because he's going to give you life. You're with me, he said. Stay with me. And the sieve that coming from the, from the trunk, the vine, the sieve that comes from the vine goes to the branches and and allows the branches, the branches to stay alive. Without the connection with the vine, the branches will not be alive. They will dry. And that's what happened. <clears throat> when we stay far from Jesus, it seems like we are turning our back to the fee of our adoption. And then... That just means that we're going to die. We're going to dry. That's the thing. Abide with me, says Jesus. And if you can read the chapter 15 by yourself at home, you will see how often Jesus is repeating, Yes, yeah, stay with me. Abide with me. Abide with me. Abide with me. Because you need me. You need this. Without this, you wouldn't be alive. So that's what Jesus does. Abide with me. You have to be aware that you have a problem. What is it? Don't deny it. Accept it. Accept that you have a problem as well. Accept, and then accept, accept the solution given to you by God himself. The fees. Jesus Christ. Accept it by faith. And then abide. And then abide. Stay with him. Stay with him because that's your salvation. If you stay with him, then the ultimate heritage is coming very soon. You know, they're going to they're gonna share. We, we won't have to fight for what's going to be ours because he has everything. Everything is his. And if you need a house, he's going to give you a house. If you need some food, he's going to give you food. If you need health, he's going to give you health because that's what's going on in his family. If you become a part of his family, then you receive that heritage. That's it. That's the beauty of Christianity. No other religion has this. The beauty of Christianity, God interacting with us through Jesus Christ. Not through man. Not through man. Not through pastor. Not through priests. Not through bishops. But through Jesus Christ. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. So abide in me, said Jesus. What, 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 what is happening? What, what, what happens when you abide with Jesus? You receive this life for, from him. You receive the sieve. So now you are transformed just to be like him. <clears throat> you have the same blood or the same sieve in you because you are now a part of him. So what about, what about obedience? What about obedience? Are we, are we asked to obey? Yes, we are. But obedience is not before acceptance. 
Remember the steps. You are, aware, you are aware, and then you accept, and then you abide. The obedience is a part of the abide. When you are abiding, the abiding, that's there. The obedience is in there. Why? Because when you are a part of the family, now you're a part of the family, you are doing what is doing. You are not making this effort of being good because he makes you good. He gives you the strength. That's why the Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not about you. It's not about you, what you can do. Like you have this list and you say, okay, uh, okay at, at 6 a.m. I got go, to get up. I got to study. I got to this. Maybe I'll be holy this day. Maybe I'll, I'll be more holy than before today if I do all this. No, the, 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 <clears throat> the reason why you do that is because you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. So you say, okay, Jesus, I love you so much. I accept it. I accept you as my Savior. Let me commune with you and read my Bible. And you open your Bible and you read and you feel this, this, <clears throat> this relationship growing with Jesus. And then the Bible will tell you, go, go, go to church on, on Saturday, Sabbath, even if everybody else can go another day and you say, okay, Jesus, because I love you, I'm going to go to church on Saturday. And it's not anymore, thank you. <clears throat> And it's not anymore about this me trying to be good, but it's about Jesus doing good to me and make me good. <clears throat> and I made a promise when I received the call to be a pastor, to tell this good news every time, every time I preach. It will be in my sermon somehow. Even if I preach about prophecy, it will be in my sermon. Even if, I preach, even if I preach about some fundamental beliefs, it will be in my sermon. Because this is the center of Christianity. It's not about what you do. It's about what he has done for you. Because we are all imperfect. And you can try as hard as you can but you will never be perfect. I'm sorry, I tried. <clears throat> now, some people think, some people think, Pastor, Pastor, if you, we've been in this church for so long, if you don't have, if you don't, if you don't preach about prophecy, your sermon is not meaty enough. Some people may say, Pastor, Pastor, oh, <clears throat> oh you're a young pastor. Uh, if, if you don't have fundamental beliefs in your sermon, uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor, that's not meaty enough. But brothers and sisters of mine, if you missed this point, I have to repeat it again. This is the meat of Christianity. Everything else revolves around this. God adopting you, even if he didn't have to. And you receive salvation through him. That's the meat of Christianity. And I will say it, I will preach about it over and over again. Over, over and over again. Probably in, in a different form, probably in a different, uh, a different illustrations or what. But I'm going to preach it anyway. Because that's what God has put in my heart. That everybody needs to remember that without Jesus... You wouldn't have Sabbath. Without Jesus, you wouldn't have health message. Without Jesus, you wouldn't have Ellen White. Without Jesus, you wouldn't have James White. Without Jesus, you wouldn't have Pastor Neri. Without Jesus, you wouldn't have Pastor Neat. Without Jesus, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. He is the meat. He is the center to our belief. It's fundamental, it's foundational, it's primordial that you remember that he is the center of your faith. Actually, he's the author of your faith and the finisher of your faith.
So abide in him. First of all, you have to be aware. What's the problem? Go make some research. Guys, younger guys, ask them. Ask your parents, what's the problem right here? Do I need to, do I need to be aware of something? You guys who don't have your parents anymore, ask God. Is there something that I need to remember? Is there something that I need to recall? I need to get out of this mess. I need to break this vicious circle. And then accept. Accept. Bring them to God. Accept. Accept his salvation and then abide. Stay. The point is clear. Continuous dependence on divine. Constant reliance upon him. Persistent spiritual embodying of his life. This is the sine qua non of spiritual fruitfulness. When you are with him, you bear fruit. Or you bear even much more, much more fruit. Which means your, lives, your, your life will become more and more better. You've done something good through him, you will, do, you will do even something better and better and better again if you stay and stick with him. And all these things, all this, these things, these tendencies and weaknesses that we inherited from our earthly, earthly parents, we can tell them to the left, to the left. I hope the young people know what I'm talking about. To the left, to the left, all you own in the box, to the left, to the left. Know the song? No? That's, that's what we're going to do. Yes, it's possible to tell them, go away out of my life, because now I'm with God, and I'm ready to bear much fruit. Abide in Christ. I am the true vine, says Jesus, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me does, that does not bear fruit, he takes them away. Oh, because you don't accept. When you, when you don't stay with God, it seems like you don't accept His offer. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes that it may bear more fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. The fruit in divine imagery represents everything that is the pr product of effective prayer. In Jesus' name. You can look at verse 7. And you will see that actually this connection with Jesus will create this bond between you and him. And you will pray with him. And, and he said, if you ask anything, I will give it to you. Because now we are in a relationship. So because of this, the, all the fruit from this relationship is the result of this prayer, this constant connection with Jesus. And this includes obedience. Obedience to Jesus' commands in verse 10. Experience of Jesus' joy in verse 11, peace, also in chapter 14. Love for one another in verse 12, and witness to the world. So all of that, it's not, the fruit here is not only about evangelism. It's not, about, it's not only about your, the way you walk as a Christian. It's not only about obedience. It's not only about peace or joy. It's all of that. But as a result of a, of a connection, constant connection with Jesus. So what? And I said, that, said this to some people. Obedience is... A fruit, not the root of Christianity. Obedience is a fruit, not the root. Yes, the law still exists. Yes, it does, but we don't go there and try to do our best to be good. Obedience is a fruit. It's a fruit of your connection with Jesus. It's a fruit of your acceptance of his love. It's a fruit of your constant abiding in Jesus. If you don't abide in Jesus, you wouldn't be able to do anything. This is a tough one as a parent because usually you want your child to obey. Like, hey, I'm saying this, you have to do this. I'm telling this, you have to do this. And sometimes, it, because of our selfishness, we are so impatient, we just said, okay, you didn't do it, your anger comes out. 
And then you say, okay, you, you're going to get this because you didn't do this. And sometimes it's not even for their best. It's just to appease our anger. But actually, obedience in God's family is a result of a relationship. It's a result of a loving relationship inside this family. So put that as your priority as parent. Relationship. And then obedience. And some other things. This fruit is nothing less than the outcome of persevering dependence on the vine. Look at the word persevering. It's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be just easy. So you have to persevere, driven by faith, embracing all of the believer's life and the product of his witness. Where imperfection, imperfection ceaseth, heaven begins. As we are coming to the end of this sermon right now, remember that you have to understand that all have sinned. Then go make some research. No, be aware of your problem. What is it? What is it, Lord? And remember that when you feel imperfect, when you feel that you are imperfect, God is there to offer you his perfection. So Jesus said, uh, help us. your prayer should be help us to be perfect just like our Father in heaven is. Just because he is the only one who is good, he is the only one who is perfect. So we got to go there. We have to see our imperfection, imperfection, but we need to understand that where imperfection ceases, ceases heaven begins. So God can be in your story now because you see that you need him. You see that you need him. You've looked at your past. And you've seen that it's hard. You've seen that you've done wrong. And, and it seems like there are just some things that you, you, can't, you can't handle. And you struggle dealing with it. But God said, I'm here. You're imperfect, but I'm perfect. Homosexuals are imperfect, but God is perfect. Adulterers are imperfect, but God is perfect. Liars like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and their sons are imperfect, but God is perfect. Burglars or stealers or oh, those, those people are imperfect, but God is perfect. You and I are imperfect, but he is perfect. And without him, we won't be able to do anything at all. So be aware of your problem. Accept his love and abide in him. You know, because, because now you... you you are, you decided, you're in this valley of decision and you, you, you are about to decide that you want to be with him. This is what's going to happen. Selfishness will become unselfishness. Covetousness will become contentment. Adultery will, come, will become faithfulness. Addiction will become self-control. Sin will become grace because of his love. And you will be accepted in his family. You know, there is, there is this hymn, uh, this powerful hymn. There is power in the blood. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There is power in the blood. Would you, over evil, victory win? There is power in the blood. There is power, wonderful power, wonderful power in the blood. There was a time in my life, I was younger than this young. And some of you say, well, is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> but I was a lot younger, and, but I've done a lot of things in my life. But somehow, you know, I decided to get baptized because I said, okay, it's enough. 
I come to God and get baptized and, and just, to, just to, to celebrate my baptism, I decide to go to the club. <clears throat> you know. So I went to the club. Because I used to go there. I used to, I used to perform there. I, 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 was, I was in this group, you know, all this singing and all, all of that. I used to go there. So I went there. And I was there. I tried to dance. I was a good dancer. I was a good dancer. <laughs> but somehow, it wasn't right. Somehow, the Spirit of God just told me, your place is not here. If you really accept Jesus Christ, you have to get out of here. So I... I just went out. I just went out of that place. I just went out of that place. I listened to that small voice, and it does exist. The small voice exists. So I went out of that place. And I never went back again. And some young people say, as I'm finishing, I'm talking to young people, but also to you guys who have experienced this. Some young people say, yes, but this is the time to experience this. This is the right time to go to the club. This is the right time to drink a little bit, because when are we going to do it? But now that I look back to all the things that I've done before, it didn't even worth it. Like, it, it, like uh, why did I do it? It, it? It's not even important to me right now. Like, it's not like I'm, I'm the best now because I did it. It, it doesn't even matter. But all of this, this coming to the understanding that all of this didn't matter, came with the fact that I accepted as a younger guy, as a younger man, accepted that Jesus Christ is my Savior. And then I started, I started to accept, search what happened with my dad, what happened with my mom? And now I know. Now I know what happened with them, and I know my problem. And I bring them to God. I, believe me, I really know them, and I struggle with them. And say, yeah, but you're a pastor. Yes, pastors are imperfect as well. And I'm struggling, I'm struggling with them, and as you are struggling with yours. But I decided, I decided, God, you are the one who is going to help me face this. And I'm still struggling, but I believe but I believe, but I believe in Jesus Christ who said, if you abide in me and I in you, you will do everything that I will do as well. You can ask anything and I will do it for you. So I pray. I pray every day, silently, through songs or whatever it is that I do with my God, my relationship with God. It doesn't have to be every morning at this time, this, this, is, this is what I have to do. It doesn't have to be a ritual. But it has to be something that you can do to connect with God. So it can be song. It can be hymns. It can be, it can be prayer. It can be reading the Bible. But God wants you to be in his family. So would you, would you, <clears throat> would you be freed from the burden of sin? There is power in the blood. Would you over sin? Would you have victory over sin? There is power in the blood. I'm going to make a call right now. I know the time. I'm going to make a call right now. Some of you in this place have been struggling, have been struggling with something that you wouldn't tell to anybody. But today, you're here, and you heard this message. And today, you want to come forward. So I'm going to ask you to come forward right now as, as Carrie plays something. As Carrie plays something. Come forward. You have this thing. You have this, this weakness, this tendency that you are willing today to bring to the cross so that Jesus Christ can, clean, can, can make you clean. Come on out. Come in front today. 
He said, come to me, all of you are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you joy. Come on out, even right now. Don't, don't think about the others. Don't think about these eyes, two eyes, or weave glasses eyes. Don't think about those eyes. There is something. God is not judging you. There is something in your life that you want to change for good. And you understand that you cannot be good except through Jesus. And you come. And Father God, I'm talking to you right now, and I believe that you see their hearts. I'm just here delivering this message, delivering this mail through HPS. But you're here, and you see their heart. You see the heart here, O oh Lord. And my heart rejoices, and I know your heart rejoices. My eyes are teary, and I know your eyes are teary, because you have talk to your people today and you reminded them that Jesus Christ is their Savior. Tens, dozens, 20 people, 30 people, Lord, are standing right now just because they are willing to remember and make it as foundational and, <clears throat> and primordial in their life that Jesus is the only one that can make them become your son and your daughter. So Father God, our eyes are closed, but our hearts are open. Because we are receptive right now, oh God. And somehow, some of us might be thinking about the time right now or the rain outside, but Lord, we are here because of you. It's so powerful, oh God. Now, they're standing here, I'm standing here, and make this be a solemn promise, Lord, that from today, from today, we will break the cycle that Satan is messing us up with. We'll break the cycle, O oh Lord, because we come to you just as we are. We don't have to say our problem because you know our problem. We don't have to judge those who are standing because we know we are, all, we are also sinners. But Lord, most of all, you said if we come, we will not stay just as we are. You will change us and we will be perfect just as you are. No, Lord, help us to persevere in this abiding until your glorious second coming because the ultimate, the climax of this family, this big family of yours is still coming. Jesus Christ is coming again, and he has a place for us, and all of us will inherit that place instead of inheriting our parents' tendencies. So thank you, God. Now shine your face upon us and bless your congregation. There are some who couldn't stand up for some reason. Be with them as well, O oh Lord. Some of them think they are too young. Some of them think they are too old. But Lord, your grace is sufficient for all. And with you we will bear much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen.